Y'all know nothing about this. You need to pay attention. Sit back and relax. It's time for Goodall's Country Kitchen. All right, we're here on Bardstown Road in the Highlands in the Daps Point neighborhood. We're at Kern's Corner. I've got a special VIP guest today, Sam Stallings, Louisville legend. Uh, anybody that's been around for a long time, I guarantee you has heard of Sam Stallings. And you remember the Farrell's Hamburger video, his son Kirk Stallings, he actually saved my life after I got hit by that bus a year ago. You can refer to that Farrell's Hamburger video and hear that story. Also, Sam used to be friends with Hunter Thompson, the Gonzo writer. Uh, they used to run around as teenagers, and Sam promised me he's going to tell a story that's actually documented in one of Hunter Thompson's books. But anyway, I was here four years ago. I actually did a video here when I did the Louisville Burger Tour. And then when I did my top five burger video a few months ago, people were screaming bloody murder that I didn't have Kern's Corner on that top five. So I'm going to do a do-over and see if I made a mistake. So anyway, i got a lot to cover today. Stay for the end of the video. There's going to be multiple stories. A couple of those stories are how Sam played a pivotal role in my life. I was at a couple crossroads and Sam was there. Basically had a direct effect on where I am today. I'll tell you more about that after the video. But right now, uh, introduce you to Sam here and tell me what you know about this place we're about ready to eat at. Well, originally there was a place down the street called Godfrey's. All of us kids used to go to the Bard Theater. There was a creamery called the Cream Top Creamery. We go to the movie, come down and get a 25 cent milkshake in the cream top creamery. And a couple of doors from the creamery was Godfrey's Bar and Lounge, owned by Paul Godfrey, who lived right up the street uh, around St. Raphael. In the 50s, Paul built a back room onto Godfrey's he called the Leopard Lounge only one place to dance in the neighborhood and that was up next door to where that was in there was another tavern there with an outside garden and that's where everybody danced so that was on the weekends paul wanted a place for the neighborhood couples to be able to dance so he built the leopard lounge behind his tavern a half a block up the street that was in the late 40s so now we get into the 50s this property became available. Paul bought this property and opened Godfrey's here in the 50s. He had a couple of pinball machines in there. You'd look on the floor at the end of the day to be confetti. There would be so many empty nickel wrappers on the floor. He had a pool table in there, a little bumper pool table, but the place came with sandwiches and soup, and it became famous immediately, especially for the cheeseburger. The cheeseburger, as everybody knows, originated at Kalen's over on Newburg Road, and Paul improved that product here at Godfrey's. Paul owned it probably 10 or 12 years, and his health got bad, and he sold it to Dick I can't remember Dick's last name. Dick was a very famous individual. He had a drinking problem. And in the morning, the, cup, the help would open the door and find Dick on the floor from the night before. So Dick didn't last too long. A few, a few years, a local bookmaker named Buck Barker lived right up here on Talbot. He and Coley McDevitt were partners. They had a book in Buck's basement, and Buck Barker and Leonard Byer, the owner of Heights Point Lounge, out on Taylorsville Road in Heights Point, 
they bought it for Gladys. Well, Buck was all tied up in his business, wouldn't work. Leonard got tired of it, so after a few years, they sold. Now, this is a very Catholic community. St. Raphael's a big parish right here. 29 guys out of the St. Raphael Men's Club put up $1,000 a piece. They put down $29,000 and bought the place from Buck and Leonard. Bobby Kern, or Bob Kern, one of the 29, was working for a beer distributor. I think he started in Fall City. I'm not sure if he stayed in Fall City when he came here or he was with Johnny Martin. But anyway, he had a beer background. So he ran the place and they changed the name to Kerners. That was in 1978. So it's 20-something years since its original owner, Paul Godfrey, to the Kerners. About five years ago, uh, of course, Bob Kern since then has died and his sons took over from Bob, Bobby Jr. and Jeff. Bobby ran the bar, Jeff handled the kitchen. Very successful, U of L UK community, big, big crowd on game day. They had a great, great, great relationship with the community. Food was the same, it never changed. And believe me, with all his travels, and I, I hear all these stories, this is the best cheeseburger in this community. So now, here we are today. Now hold on, before he goes further, you got the Bambi bar right across the street. So that's a, hit, a big statement he just made. Go ahead. No comparison. Kearns' Corner is the best. The Bambi's been there for years. They do a nice business. I was in there many, many times myself. But it doesn't compare to Kearns. Write that down, folks. Is that it? Well, that's the background on how we got here. Well, that's one heck of a, a history lesson we just got there. Uh, so I'm sure y'all tired of hearing us out here flapping our gums. We're going to go on in and see about ordering some food. All right, so I'm starting off with a little appetizer here. I asked the owner what their signature soup was, and he said chili. So I was thinking I, I, I might get the bean soup later, too. I'd have heard that their bean soup was good. Anyway, I'm gonna start working on this for the burger and stuff. All right. See, I got all the fixings. I got the spaghetti in it, old school. I'm gonna taste it before I put the hot sauce in there, so don't be hating. By the way, Ryan and I were talking. We're gonna come up with a segment on our videos. Some of these comments are so funny from the haters, which I love it. Keep the comments coming. But we're gonna have a segment, I think, at the end of our videos called Hater of the Week. So stay tuned for that one. All right. That's good. I like that. They're not scared to put the extra chili powder in there. I can taste that. Mm. All right. Now I'm gonna try this hot sauce that one of my followers sent me this week. Roy Rains. It's Rocky's Bacon Hot Sauce. Got a nice smell to it. Let's see if I can taste the bacon in there. Bacon and chili. All right, Roy. Appreciate it. Now I'm going to have to get the bean soup just to have some more Roy's hot sauce. M Plus One Bikes has the largest selection of e-bikes in the United States, and we also offer demos. Demos are a great way to figure out which one you like, what you're looking for, and what you want in an e-bike. 
They are great exercise. It's great for keeping up with friends and family who might be a little bit faster than you. And it gets you out cycling. So come down and demo one of our bikes today. I want to show you around here best I can. I'm going to try not to show anybody, but you see there, got the old school bar here. We're now, we're now, middle of the afternoon. There's still a crowd of regulars here, but you see they got the old school griddle, flat top grill. See those burgers on there. I'm sure they grilled the bun too. Y'all grill your buns? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Mark of a professional. If you, like I said, if you go somewhere, ain't no grilled buns. It's it's amateur hour. Anyway, it's a little bitty joint, but it's cozy. And this is the Bellarmine, one of the Bellarmine Jersey players from when they won the Division II championship here several years ago. There's all kinds of memorabilia. Paul Horning, Will Wolford. Local le legends, horse racing, a lot of a lot of horse racing fans uh, like to hang out here over the years. And you got a little outdoor patio here for your smokers. And oh yeah, this must be the liars' corner down here because they got their own sign up here. Sam's getting his ready. You see, we got this big old bottle of ketchup here because I think Sam kind of goes like my style. Do you the, do the ketchup dip or do you put the ketchup on it? I put the ketchup on it. Yeah, because Kirk, you saw in that Farrell's video, Kirk does the ketchup dip like I do. And it looks like lettuce, pickle, onion, and what, American cheese? Old school. And that's what I like about these burgers here. This is old school working man type burger here. The best. He said better than Bambi, so. When he took a picture of that Horning paraphernalia, my brother used to bring Horning in there with his dog all the time. And my brother was a lawyer, but they only referred to the dog as the lawyer. <laughs> All right, let's see what he's got in him here. Yep, he did a double snapping turtle. Actually, about a one and a half. But I like his style. You see there? He, with that kind of bite, that's about a three, maybe a four bite burger there. All right, I'm going to let him work on that. Unless you want to hear him talk and do the chipmunk technique. No thanks. <laughs> yeah, Kingsley's fresh every day. I'm glad you just brought that up. Oh, yeah. Every day. No. All right, another little additive I just found out. They get their burger fresh every day from Kingsley's. If any of y'all are familiar with Kingsley's, you know that's top of the line meat. Never frozen. Oh, yeah. I put the uh, pickles on there. And of course, you know what's coming. Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right. When I was here before with Melissa. And let me tell you, I never said that the Kern burger was not good. I said it was great before, but I didn't have the double. That's true. Melissa and I got singles that other time. You get the double on there, that's a game changer. But I'm not going to say it's better than Bambi, but I'm going to say it's right up there with it. And that's, that's tall cotton there. Mm. I'll say it's better. <laughs> Remember, he's a Johnny come lately. I've been eating these two burgers since the 50s. Kearns is better. 
By the way, I think that's after his second bite. All right. You're hearing it from the authority. Oh, I can't wait to hear this Hunter Thompson story. Y'all make sure y'all stick around. We're now on our fifth owner here at Kearns' Corner. Clay Schulhofer is now the owner, and he has improved. He's got a little garden-like atmosphere in the back where you can eat outside. This is quite a neighborhood tavern. It's been here for almost 80 years. All right, here we go. This is old school. A lot of y'all don't know nothing about this. Got the Braunschweiger. See there? Got the onion and pickle. And I've also got the old school beer mustard. It's spicy, but not real hot. All right, let me get these pickles on there. That's the way you get Braunschweiger or liver cheese. Got a pickle, onion, and mustard. Put this mustard on there. And also, Bean soup is one of the nice accessories that you would get with a Braunschweiger sandwich. We'll taste that first. Mm. Looks like northern white beans. I'm going to try some of Rory Rains' bacon hot sauce. That's really the reason I got this bean soup. I'm going to taste this hot sauce with the bean soup. Mm. Mm. That is good. All right, here we go. Braunschweiger on rye, pickle onion, and beer mustard. Mmm. That beer mustard's good. Yes. Yes. I want to find out where they get that. Or the recipe for it because that's some really good mustard. Good Braunschweiger too. Sure, that comes from Kingston too. I'm gonna find out. Wash it down a little diet. How about the bean soup? Bean soup's really good. Uh, this is fresh. You can tell when a bean soup is not fresh because the beans are mushy. These have perfect consistency. Still has a little texture to it. Yeah, if anybody that has any kind of standards whatsoever, if you got leftover bean soup, never serve it the second day. It just turns to mush. As you saw, everything was great. Uh, I know a lot of you out there get tired of me hearing about, oh, he says this is great and that was great. Well, I do my research. I won't go to a place unless I know ahead of time it's great. And the owner, Clay Schulhafer, I commend you carrying on the tradition of Kearns. It's as good or better than it ever was that I ever had. I can guarantee you that. But you, Sam? Well, like I say, I've been here since the 50s, eating both spots, Bambi and Kearns. And I'd rate this as the top cheeseburger in the city of Louisville. Well, you know me. I hate to say one's better than the other, but I can guarantee you two of the top cheeseburgers are right across the street from each other right here in Dops Point. Now, we're going to get on to story time. Let me start first uh, by telling you, like Sam, who came in my life just at the nick of time a couple times. The first time was in 1984-85. I was down at a JUCO playing football in Mississippi, and I was getting discouraged down there, thinking about just hanging it all up. And Coach Dave Moore from University of Louisville had just got lost his job because Bob Weber had gotten fired. And Sam knew that I was down there in Mississippi because I was friends with Kirk, his son. His former Trinity coach. Oh, yeah, and Dave Moore was the former Trinity coach, of course. 
But anyway, Sam told Dave Moore that I was down in Mississippi and that I was available, I could transfer. So Dave Moore called me up one night and asked me if I'd be interested in a scholarship to the University of Evansville. I said, uh, I'll be there this weekend. Flew home, signed the scholarship, ended up at Evansville the next year playing football with his son, Kirk. Uh, the second crossroads was, originally I didn't graduate when I played football at Evansville. I left after my senior year. 14 years later, Sam comes along and basically tricked me into going back to school, went back to Evansville <clears throat> and finished my bachelor's degree in education at Evansville. But it was all his doing because he wouldn't leave me alone. Finally needled me so much. I said, I'll tell you what, Sam, if I go down there and the registrar makes it doable, I'll do it. But I don't want to hear another word. Sam drove me down there one morning, registrar laid out the red carpet, let me keep all my credits from 14 years before made me a schedule out that made it achievable to go ahead and get my degree. So the rest is history. I graduated a year and a half later and it was all Sam's doing. All right, all right. now we get to the, the good part we've been waiting on. Tell about your history with Hunter Thompson and one of the stories that was uh, documented in one of his books. As you all know, the gonzo writer Hunter Stockton Thompson is a Louisvillian. Uh, unfortunately, he had the same type genes I had. We met together at Highland Junior High School in the uh, ninth grade, and then both of us went to Mayo, which only had three years at the time. Uh, we were both on the basketball team in Holland, and unfortunately, we both liked to drink and smoke. So that started that. Uh, I was supposed to be a basketball star. That didn't work out. My smoking and drinking got in the way of that at Mayo. And Hunter and I would start going out at night we were probably in every liquor cabinet in Anchorage and Middletown until six in the morning if the people would leave us alone. And of course, many jails followed. The one story I'm gonna tell you, one night in the summer, we were loaded in, in Cherokee Park and an altercation came about with another car. Well, we got outside, got into a fight, ended up downtown in jail. We went to court, uh, things were manufactured up. We couldn't quite control. My dad was a lawyer and got me out. <clears throat> Hunter got 30 days. He wouldn't get Hunter out. So about five days before the 30 was up, he went, my father went back to the judge and got Hunter back in front of the judge. And the judge told Hunter he would let him out if he went into the service. Now Hunter had a command of the English language that was unbelievable. I saw him correct a college prep English teacher at Mayo when he was 16 years old. He did not graduate from high school. He went into the service. He got his GED in the service. And that was the total education of Hunter Stockton Thompson. I think he had six bestsellers. And Barry tells me that this story is in one of those books. They used to be after me all the time, wanting to try to interview me on Hunter and I never would let anybody do it. One time I finally relinquished and let a girl come to my home, which was right up the street. I lived in Hayfield at the time. And she sat down at my kitchen table and interviewed me. And every time it got to the gory stuff, I clammed up and wouldn't tell her. 
So she took it upon herself to write what she thought happened. I should have sued her over this incident that I just told you about. Because uh, she put in her book that I had a gun, which was an absolute falsehood. But my father wouldn't let me. Hunter was, uh, for you people that know him, knew that he was into psychedelic drugs a lot. I never did see him much after Mayo High School. By the way, we got kicked out 11 days before graduation. Uh, I passed an entrance exam, went to Bellarmine, uh, then went back in the summer and got my high school degree. After that, I went to eight colleges, got kicked out of seven, and finally graduated from Bellarmine 17 years after I started. But I got it. So I could tell my children, here's mine, where's yours? Well, we both have that in common because uh, I took a 14-year break from college, too, and went back. I think it, mine was 20 years after I graduated high school. Thank God he didn't have the history in between that I had. He just didn't go to school. I was quite active in too many other situations. Since then, I quit smoking in January 16th of 75. Finally quit drinking February 12th, 1983. Haven't had a drink in 40 years. Uh, it just wasn't for me anymore. You've gotten quite a few educational stories today from Mr. Barry Goodall. I hope you enjoy his show because I can promise you one thing. We're at the finest cheeseburger place in Louisville, Kentucky. Well, I'm going to tell a story about the first time I ever met you. And if you don't give me permission to put it, I'll edit it out later. But the first time I can recall meeting you, was at the Lebanese American Country Club on River Road in the fall of 1983. It was somebody's bachelor party and you were the pit boss of a crap game, an illegal crap game that was going on. And he was antagonizing the players that were gambling and trying to make them mad to where they would put up more money. The more they lose, the more he'd make fun of them and then they would get motivated to try to win their money back until they all went busted. But anyway, am I allowed to keep that one in? Sure. <laughs> all right, well, I promised you that Sam was a good storyteller and you're in luck because either later this week or next week, we are gonna review O'Brien's Tavern on Dixie Highway, which has been known to have the top fried cod in the city of Louisville. Ice Atlantic cod. Exactly. If they don't sell Ice Atlantic, they, they don't have the best. I can tell you that. But anyway, we've had a great time today. I hope y'all enjoyed the stories. Clay Schulhafer is the fifth owner of Kearns' Corner. We've had quite a bit of old Louisville history today. Good, bad, and ugly. But you know, it's not how you start the race, folks. It's how you finish. And y'all don't know nothing about this Kern's Corner. Now you know the facts of why I'm on a mission. You're always welcome back to Goodall's Country Kitchen.